Buy a floor pad, they are phenomenal. Okay, what's up, y'all? Um, those of you that have watched my other videos may have known that I blew up the clutch on my F800. Uh, I had a Recluse uh, auto disc, whatever, in there. And their clutch pack basically disintegrated on me. Let me see if I can find a really bad one. Yeah, here's a bad one. Um, all of the pads on the clutch discs <laughs> came off. Um, I'll put a picture of the destruction somewhere um, that I picked out the last time I had my clutch apart when it started slipping on me and I took a look at it. So um, I have an EBC clutch that's ready to go in. Uh, Recluse did offer to send me a clutch, but that was three weeks ago and I haven't heard anything back from them yet, despite sending a couple emails. So in the meantime, we're going to get this one in. What I've done so far, uh, Let's see how this goes is you take the shift lever off. There's a external Torx fastener there. Um, you should take the pedal off, but I have fast waves and it's easy to take the uh, stay on the bottom off and then it just flops out of the way. And then there's two T45 bolts holding your foot lever assembly. Make sure that you support it out of the way since there is the kickstand switch attached to the back of that. From there, there's like 14 different um, Torx bolts to get off. And off the top of my head, I don't remember what size that is. Where did that go? Well, I guess I'll need to find where I put that freaking socket later. Anyways, take those off. Um, and then you can pull your clutch cover off. Um, pro tip, it does help to wiggle this and it'll kind of push it off of there. There is a washer that'll usually stick to the back side here, so make sure you don't lose that and put it back on your shift shaft. Um, if you're careful, you can reuse the clutch cover gasket a couple times. I did buy a spare one just in case though, and then I also bought a um, gasket to go, or not gasket, what is that called? Whatever to go over the shift shaft right here. Um, I've had it in and out a few times and it just has gotten grody. Uh, BMW it does actually sell a little like shift shaft condom looking thing to protect the splines and the um, cover there, but I clearly have never bought it. So um, let's see, once you have this off, you will take a five millimeter hex and undo your clutch basket. Uh, which has, or sorry, your clutch uh, plate, which has your springs in it. Um, make sure as you're loosening these, you're doing it evenly and in short increments. That way you aren't bending or warping your, your plate. And then you can just pull this off and then pull your stack of plates out. Um, the last few steel ones at the back can be kind of hard to get. Either use a pick or uh, I used a magnet and it works pretty well because it is steel. So we are now going to put our clutch back in and put it back together. And sorry, I'm rushing through this. I'm just trying to make it a quick video for y'all. Um, and I think I bumped the tripod. Let's make sure I'm in frame. Close enough. Oh, that's where that went. Those uh, cover bolts are a T30. <laughs> Um, all right, so reassembling the clutch. Uh, EBC actually doesn't recommend soaking your your plates. Uh, a lot of like cork or felt clutch plates, you soak them usually overnight beforehand. And EBG, EBC just says light coat of oil. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, they include one notched steel plate. So you can see the notch here and that goes in first. After that, you have a narrow tab plate. Um, and for this, it is apparently a 13 millimeter tab instead of a 14 millimeter tab. Um, and this is important. There are two sizes and it won't work right if you don't have the right size. So make sure you get that correct as I get a nice thin laying, thin, layer of oil on this. It's still weird to me not to soak a clutch, but that is what they tell you to do. So that is what we are going to do and tuck that in. Um, from here, you're going to alternate steel plates and 
your regular plates, your steel plates and your light lined plates, um, alternating until you get to the very last one. And the very last one is also going to be a, a narrow tab plate. You should have, I don't even remember how many. You should have two narrows and the rest are wide. So make sure you have those. If not, you might need to order some parts from BMW. Um, but the EBC clip, kit I used did have them all appropriately in here. So we are good there on my end. Um, this is, I think, the EBC insert part number on the screen here. I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's Aramid lined. It's supposed to be like their high, high torque sport, sport extra, whatever, clutch. Um, for me, it was the one that I could get quickly. <laughs> uh, I commute daily on my F800, so I wanted to make sure I had something that I could get. Um, it also comes with a little bit heavier duty springs, which will be nice. A little bit better clutch pull and a little bit more grip there. Um, and came with all new steel plates. My steel plates weren't in terrible shape, but um, just knowing what they went through and knowing... Some of them are a little, none of them are miscolored. None of them are worn beyond spec, but the kit came with them. So we're going with it. All right, and we're just going to continue on. Um, I have a bunch more of these to do. You don't have to watch them. I will cut the video here. The last plate get you in close this last plate is pretty important um, the last one is offset so I said it was a narrow tab the thick tab ones will not fit but it is offset from the rest of them very important okay now I'm going to uh, put my basket back on and my uh, plate back on and then uh, EBC's kit came with new clutch springs. So we're going to install with those. I'm excited, they say 15% stiffer. We'll see how that feels. Um, I have heard you can alternate and do like a, a halfway in between, but go big or go home, right? So we're going to start each of these by hand. And we're gonna tighten them all up just a little bit at a time before we go through and do like a star pattern final torque. Which will be in a minute. And not right now. Um, as you're putting these in, make sure that the uh, this keeper washer is the right side. It has a ridge on the bottom um, that fits within the spring. Maybe you can see it there. I don't know. Um, so make sure you have that seated correctly before you tighten everything. So I'm going to tighten these down and then we'll get after it. Then these get torqued diagonally at uh, seven foot pounds, 10 newton meters or seven point something foot pounds, which is not much. Cool. That is that. Let's get uh, other things back in place. Okay, everything is all torqued up and we're gonna get ready to get this back on and put back together. I did change out my shift shaft seal. Flathead screwdriver it out. Just press the new one in with my thumbs. Nothing special there. Um, uh, yeah, for putting this back on, 
We want the clutch lifter arm to line up with in here, which can be a little bit of a pain. Make sure that your um, stud is still here as well. And then just kind of slide it on. Um, there is a secret BMW hint to line up the underside of this this way, and hopefully it will then align with that lift arm. All right. A lot of times I'll have to pull it off and play with it a couple times to get it to actually go. Uh, don't forget to make sure that that washer is there on the shift shaft arm as well. And hey, that one's much easier. All right, so our arm should be able to go there and we're on. So we're gonna put in all of our bolts again um, this one is 12 newton meters or just under nine foot pounds. And then uh, I'll put a picture of the tightening sequence. It is a sequence to it. Basically you do, uh, let's see if I can see my picture. Do this one, then go along the top then go along the bottom. And then you go up through here and then you do these two. So follow along as I do it or um, you can just look at the picture at the end. All right, so you probably saw me put everything back on footrest, clutch, what, or um, shifter, whatever. Uh, from here, you are just setting your clutch free play so you should have three millimeters per the bmw uh for the bmw manual that basically the lever moves just a little tiny bit uh before it actually starts moving the clutch itself if you need more slack loosen up this top nut and if you need less slack tighten up this top nut and this bottom one works real well as a uh, lock nut. Well, you kind of use them both together, but the gist is that. And that is a replaced clutch. Don't forget to put oil in it. Um, I actually have to drop the oil pan next, and that's going to be a different video, but uh, try and get all those clutch plates fragments out before uh, I refill it and do all that jazz. So. One more thing I should have mentioned. Um, you can do this whole thing by tipping the bike over on its right hand side and you can do it without draining the oil then. Since I have to pull the pan though, I did it upright and well, I'm pulling the pan. So we're gonna have to do an oil change anyway, but. Hey, it is now Sunday and I just got back from a ride on the bike. Uh, a couple things. Um, one, new clutch is phenomenal um, and two, Two things I've wanted to point out with brand new discs. One, they might be sticky at first. So what I did is I put it on the center stand, dropped it into gear, and then rode the back brake a little bit until they freed up against each other. Otherwise, if I was sitting flat and put it in first, it would just immediately die. So that was um, that. I mentioned before that the EBC kit says not to soak the discs, and I think that probably contributed somewhat. Um, but then the second thing is just over the first hundred miles or so your your discs are going to wear out um a little bit they're just going to break in a little bit um and you will probably need to adjust your clutch a couple times in there so pay attention to the free play at the level or at the lever and if it starts getting tight adjust it again so clutch is good i'm happy i'll see y'all later